ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد إن شاء الله tonight this is our first session should have been our second but Allah سبحانه وتعالى decreed for it to be the first one uh, doing Hisnul Muslim, the fortress of the Muslim. This is a book that uh, the Sheikh Saeed Al Qahtani, Hafizahullah, he authored. He collected words of dhikr and dua from the book and the sunnah pertaining to the different parts of the day. It is widely uh, spread. If you don't have a, a copy, inshallah, we do have copies and we distribute them for free. You can download it uh, from the internet. It is available for the PC, for the Android and uh, uh, iPhone and all of that. It is also translated into the English language. There are a number of translations for this book titled The Fortress of the Muslim. The Fortress of the Muslim. Now this hadith that we are going to do today is a hadith uh, that the Sheikh included amongst the du'as, the supplications, uh, the invocations that you do in the salah, that is after the tashahud and before the salam. And we mentioned that this hadith is narrated from Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu. He radiallahu anhu led the people in the prayer and he uh, lightened the salah. Usually they would expect the salah to take longer than what it took. So they asked him about that, that the salah was light. So he said, I do not care that the salah was light after I made these words of dua that Rasulullah taught him to say. And uh, he mentioned the dua for them. And uh, as I mentioned, the dua is actually uh, a long dua. So I don't know how uh, uh, really uh, short his salah was because this dua according to the book that I have here is like uh, nine about nine and a half lines right so uh, I will go I will be going through the explanation of this uh, dua inshallah ta'ala now the author Saeed Al-Qahtani he has the book titled The Fortress of the Muslim this is a book of dhikr and remembrance that you use throughout the day. When you go to sleep, then you wake up, what you say, then uh, you go to use the washroom, what you say, you come out after wudu, what you say, before wudu, what you say, and after wudu. Um, then you go to the masjid, what do you say when you go out, you pray, what do you say in your prayer? All positions. Then after you finish, what to say? Then the dhikr of the morning. And he goes on like that throughout the daily life. He has another book. The author has another book. He titled it, Ad-Dua wal-Ilaju bil-Ruqa in Al-Kitab wa sunnah So, Hisn al-Muslim, Fortress of the Muslim from the book and the Sunnah. This second book is titled, uh, Ad-Dua, supplication, and Ilaj bil ruqa treatment through Ruqa. Ruqa are words of dhikr and dua that you use to seek the healing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This second book, he included in it many duas from the Quran and the Sunnah. The first uh, print uh, of it, it has 122 du'as from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. The second print is even more expanded. It has about 150. He added more du'as into it. This second book, titled Ad-Dua, Supplication, was explained by 
uh, one of the students of knowledge from Kuwait. And uh, this book was printed in Arabic, reviewed and revised by the author himself, Saeed Al Qahtani, Hafizullah. So I'm taking this explanation of this dua from this explanation of a dua. That's why it's going to be longer than what you usually hear because we're going through the fortress and the explanation of the fortress. Usually, the explanation of the fortress is a short explanation. But then I found that this dua is a great dua. The explanation uh, of a dua from this second book is more expanded. So I said, let's go through it from there. He depended on uh, other books from the scholars. One of them is the great scholar Al-Hafidh Ibn Rajab Al-Hanbali who wrote a small booklet explaining this dua. So he also is quoting and taking from uh, that booklet. Now this uh, hadith, uh, it says, O oh Allah, Allahumma bi'ilmika al-ghayb. O oh Allah, because of your knowledge of the unseen. Wa qudratika ala al-khalq and your ability to create. Give me life, cause me to live, as long as you know that living is better for me. Cause me to die, if you knew that death is better for me. Oh Allah, I ask you, fear of you, when I am alone and when I am with the people. Hmm? In ghayb, when I am by myself, and shahada, when I'm witnessed by others. I ask you the word of truth in satisfaction and in times when I'm satisfied and in times when I'm angry. And I ask you, Moderation in times when I am wealthy and the times when I am poor. I ask you bliss and enjoyment that never finishes. And I ask you satisfaction, literally coolness of the eye, which means that you are comfortable and you're satisfied. Satisfaction that never ceases. I ask you to be pleased after the decree, after the destiny, after you have destined something for me. I ask you the coolness of living after dying. And I ask you the enjoyment of looking at your face. And the eagerness, the yearning to meet with you, O oh Allah. في غير ضراء مضرة. Not going through hard times that will hurt me. ولا فتنة مضلة. Not going through turmoil, not going through confusion and temptation. A trial that will lead me astray. اللهم زينا بزينة الإيمان. O oh Allah, beautify us with the beauty of faith وَجْعَلْنَا هُدَاتًا مُهْتَدِينَ and make us guides and guided make us guides that is for others and guided within ourselves as you have seen this dua is a long dua they're telling him uh, you have prayed a light salah you led us in a light salah so this is just the dua that he made in the salah towards the end of it this dua is greatly uh, beneficial it is having a great status its benefits are abundant that is because of the meanings and the noble obje objectives that are contained in it high uh, noble goals that are contained in it in terms of aqidah belief creed in terms of akhlaq morals and manners in terms of ibadat acts of worship acts of worship that are Vahira wa batina that are outward acts of worship and inward acts of worship. Outward, those acts of worship that we do with our body parts, inward 
acts of worship that we do by our heart, fear and hope and the so on and so forth. It has in it seeking nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal by asking him through his names, beautiful names and high attributes. It, in it is refer, referring all matters to Allah Azza wa Jal. In it there is tawakkul, reliance upon Allah Jalla wa Ala. Also in it there is asking of tawfiq, facilitations and uh, facilitation and assistance to perfectly be uh, a servant, a true servant uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In it also is asking the highest bliss, the highest enjoyment in the next life and the highest enjoyment and bliss in this worldly life and other than these of the uh, high and noble objectives or important objectives. The uh, benefit of the dua becomes great and large and huge. Uh, this dua and other duas that are like it, the benefit of it becomes huge and great when you understand the meanings of those duas, when you reflect upon what these words in these dua indicates you know, what the indications in these du'as, their precious and noble objectives uh, to be known, and striving hard to achieve those noble objectives by your statement, by your action, and by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot, asking Him a lot to have, uh, to attain, to achieve those noble objectives. It starts by, Allahumma bi'ilmika al ghayb O oh Allah, due to the fact, because of your knowledge of Al-Ghayb. The Ghayb is the unseen world. The hidden, the world that is hidden from us. So this could be while now we are here, living here. It could be part of the world that is witnessed, but it is witnessed by other people. We are in this masjid. We don't know what's happening in the parking lot or in those stores, or in another masjid, let alone the other parts of the world, the other side of the globe. We don't know. That is ghaib from us. It is witnessed by others. It is ghaib for us. Exactly like we are witnessing what's happening here, and others, it is a ghaib for them, unless they are watching us here through this uh, camera now, uh, through the internet. Those are as if they are with us, although they are away from us, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated those means for us to be connecting with each other, although there are uh, very much far distances, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for facilitating, for making easy uh, the knowledge and learning it uh, in these times in which, unfortunately, although knowledge has been made readily available, many people are just ignoring it and neglecting it. Oh Allah, here you are asking him, asking of his mercy. And you are humbling yourself before him. I ask you because you know what is hidden from your creation. That which is hidden from your creation, and I'm one of them, is not hidden from you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is knowledge that you kept for yourself. This knowledge of the hidden world, the world of the unseen is something that Allah kept for himself. So the creation, they don't know it. So I'm asking you with this knowledge that you have, which no one else has. So in this, you are referring the affairs. You are referring the affairs to Allah Azza wa And you are asking him the best for your affairs, for your condition. You are asking that from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the means of nearness to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his knowledge, his knowledge which encompassed everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompassed and surrounded everything with his knowledge. So you are asking him by his great knowledge. Then he says, وَبِقُدْرَتِكَ عَلَى الْخَلْقِ and because of your ability to create, ability of creating. Here, you are seeking the means of nearness to Allah Azza wa Jal 
because of his complete ability, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ability that is in effect, that reaches and encompasses all the creation, whether the creation were humans, ins, or the creation were from the jinn, the non-humans, and the angels, al-malaika. This is now seeking the means of achieving whatever you're asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the means to that by the attribute of ability. After mentioning the attribute of knowledge. So because you are knowledgeable and because the, after that, because you are able. So you asking him with this attribute of ability after the attribute of knowledge, now you are more hopeful to have your dua being answered and being accepted. That is because asking Allah and getting closer to Allah, seeking the means to get closer to Allah by mentioning His names and attributes is one of the greatest means by which you can be hopeful that your dua will be answerable. You should know that things that you ask of Allah, needs that you ask from Allah, the servant would ask from Allah, those needs are of two types. The first type of needs is مَا عُلِمَ أَنَّهُ خَيْرٌ محت. What you know that it is good, absolutely good. There is no doubt that it is good and all of it is good. Like asking Allah to be fearful of him, to grant you fear of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. To ask him that you become obedient to him, that you have taqwa, piety for him. Asking him paradise, seeking refuge with him from the fire. This you ask from Allah without hesitation, without linking it to uh, knowing that it is better or not. That is because it is always better. You don't say, if you know that this is good, then give it to me. Piety, obedience, all of that is known to be good. So you ask it without hesitation. The second type of things or needs that you ask is what you don't know the servant doesn't know whether it is good for him or not like dying living uh, being rich being poor having children having a family and the rest of the needs in this worldly life which you are ignorant of the ends. You are ignorant of their consequences. So those, you shouldn't be asking them uh, of Allah, except what you know, that there is good in it for the servant. That is because the servant is not knowledgeable of the consequences, of the ends, of the affairs. And this dua has included within it these two types. يعني you might have children and those children يكون عندك الولد والولد هو الذي يدخلك النار تدخل النار بسبه. You have children and because of that you enter into the fire because you just want to do what they, whatever they ask you to do. As in the other hadith, uh, seeking refuge with Allah from a spouse to shayibuni قبل المشيب that make your hair goes gray before the time comes for gray hair, right? A spouse that will <laughs> become, you are asking to get married, to get married, and then you get married thinking that this will be now the paradise on earth and it turns into, be, turns into being the opposite, right? And so on and so forth. Wealth, you are wealthy, but then you spend it in things that are haram so it becomes it backfire yani instead of helping you in your life making a path for you to paradise it will make you go the other way to the fire so those things those things as you can see in this hadith living or dying living or dying hmm? here is linked in this hadith in this dua it is linked by 
what is good for the servant. So when he asked for living or dying, he linked it to what is good. Make me live if you know that living is better for me. Make me die if dying is better for me. But then when asking for fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, there is no hesitation in there. There is no conditional asking there. You ask it uh, with firmness. So the servant, he should have understanding in this aspect, in this uh, issue of dua. He should have understanding as to what he would call Allah with, what he would ask Allah Azza wa That is because he's asking the Lord of the earth and the heavens. So he should be choosing for his Lord, for his ally, Limaulah, the best of the words and the best of the meanings and the most noble of the wishes. Here he says, Ahini ma alimta al hayata khayrali. Make me live as long as living is better for me. I ask you to make me live a good life. That is, my good will be will beat and outweigh my evil in this life. That is by me holding on to the legislation. Following the sunnah of your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So living, if make me live, if living is better for me. In this, there is complete uh, reference of the affairs to Allah Azza wa Jal. Giving precedence to his choice, subhanahu wa ta'ala, over your choice. Make me live if living is better for me. You are referring the matter to him. If living is better, then make me live. You are referring that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is because the human being is weak and unable, ajiz. And he has weakness. He is weak to me when making a choice, making a decision even for himself. The human being is unable to achieve things of benefit for himself and pushing away the harms, except, except when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps him to do so and makes it easy for him to achieve that. In this also, in this, when you are referring this to Allah azza wa jal, there is having good thought about Allah. Husnul dhanni billahi jalla wa ala. You have good thought about how perfect and complete his actions are subhanahu wa ta'ala and how perfect and complete his attributes are subhanahu wa ta'ala and how uh, they are linked with his perfect and complete wisdom knowledge and justice it says make me die cause me to die if dying is better for me that is when my evils beat and outweigh my good deeds or by confusion, temptations, turmoil, corruption and evil happening in the religion. So in this case, yani if you live, this will happen. So in this case, then dying is better because within it, there is uh, comfort, there is rest for the believer. And if he's alive and he's going through a lot of corruption, a lot of evil, a lot of trials and tribulations, a lot of temptations, you don't want that. You want to be safe from these trials. This is why in the Sunnah, the authentic Hadith, there has come the forbidden of wishing death, wishing death because of some sort of a harm that happens to the servant. That is because the servant is not knowledgeable of the consequences, not knowledgeable of the ends of the affairs. This hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari. It says that Rasulullah said, لا يتمنى أحدكم الموت Let not one of you wish death. Let him not wish death. إما محسنا فلعله يزداد He is either a doer of good, he is someone who is praying and fasting. So, he will increase of doing goodness, that is if he lived. 
وإما مسيئا فلعله يستعتب or either he will be someone who is doing evil so by him living he may be asking or working to seek the pleasure of his Lord so here we are forbidden from wishing death that is because if you are doing good then by you living it is hoped that you will be increased in good deeds and if you are committing evil deeds then maybe you will seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by leaving and abandoning those sins and by asking and requesting forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so tawaffani if you have to ask death then ask Allah conditional like that refer it to him make me die if dying is better for me make me die if dying is better for me otherwise it is not allowed to ask death it is not allowed to ask death but in this way you are asking for death if dying is better for me you are referring it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now after that he asked for three things after this he asked for three things those three things they have come in another hadith and those three are from the munjiyat things that will save things what that will warrant that will guarantee salvation for the servant of Allah this hadith it says muhlikat, three things that are destructive shuhun muta greed stinginess that is obeyed wahawan muttaba desires that are followed wa'ijabul mar'i bi nafsi and the person admiring himself wathalathun munjiyat three things that will save so you have three things that are destructive three things that are saving guaranteeing salvation those are the three things that you will find them in this dua but we are getting them from the other hadith. What are these three things that will save? Khashiyatullahi fi sirri wal alaniya. Fearing Allah in secrecy and in the open. When you are by yourself, seclusion, and when you are with the people. Wal qasdu wa wal qasda fil ghina wal faqr. Moderation when you are wealthy or poor. Wa kalimatul haqqi fil rida wal ghadab. And saying the word of truth making a true statement whether you are pleased or whether you are angry so here in this this is the hadith and the dua that we are doing it says as'aluka khashiyataka fil ghaybi wa shahada oh allah i ask you fearing you when i'm by myself or when i'm witnessed by others so i ask you to continuously fear you uh, having fear of you whether I am in secrecy or in the open uh, outwardly or inwardly whether I am with the people or away from them for fearing you is the chief of every good Allah Azza wa praised in so many ayat those who fear him man yakhshahu bil ghayb those who fear him subhanahu wa ta'ala bil ghayb although they do not see him subhanahu wa ta'ala now having this khashya bil ghayb you fear Allah azza wa jal right although you don't see him you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are uh, by yourself or when you are with the people this khashya you get the khashya or the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the secrecy or in the open by uh, a few matters Amongst these causes that will lead to fearing Allah is having strong faith, strong Iman, strong faith in His promise and in His threat, the promise of paradise and also the threat of punishment for the disobediences. So if you have strong faith in that, then this will lead you to be fearful of Allah, whether you are by yourself or with others. Also, uh, uh, reflecting and thinking pondering over the severe punishment 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his ability, his might, his compulsion, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, this also uh, will lead you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always. Also, quwwatul muraqabati lillah, to be strongly uh, aware uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is watching you, that you know that Allah is witnessing you, he is watching the hearts of his servants and his deeds, that he is with them subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, although he is above seven heavens on his throne, he is with them subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his creation wherever they are. Nothing is hidden from him subhanahu wa ta'ala from their affairs. The next is أسألو, أسألوك كلمة الحق في الرضا والغضب. I ask you the word of truth in satisfaction, in pleasure and in anger. This objective is very, very rare. Hard to find in realities. In, real wor in the real world, it is very hard to find someone who is making a true statement, whether he is happy, satisfied, pleased with you, or whether he is angry with you, right? It is very difficult to find this. This is why he asked uh, his Lord here in this dua, that, O oh Allah, make me one who utters, makes statements that are true statements in all of my conditions, whether I am angry and whether I am pleased. So I will not, you know, change the words. I will not uh, uh, please the people at the cost of harming my religion because I don't want them to be angry with me, right? So uh, you uh, always... Uh, Ask, you ask Allah to be always making a true statement in all conditions. Uh, this is something يعني, very difficult as the poet says, وَعَيْنُ الرِّضَى عَنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَلِيلَةٌ The eye of pleasure, when you are looking through the eye of love and satisfaction and pleasure, this eye is very deficient to detect the flaws and deficiencies because you are looking with admiration. MashaAllah, you know, you look at something. So because you love it so much, you like it so much, you're so much pleased and satisfied with it, it's very difficult to detect a flaw or a deficiency. If you look now through the eye of anger, now flaws and deficiencies, they will emerge and they become so apparent. They will become so apparent, right? So spouses, they have this all the time. If he or she is pleased, then everything is good. Now, just few minutes they get angry, they flip the other side now. Everything is bad, <laughs> right? Whether a husband or a wife, this is something that you see happening all the time. This dua is asking Allah to make you say the word of truth, whether you are satisfied and pleased or whether you are angry with those whom you are judging or talking to. This is the third matter that he is asking pertaining to the three things that will guarantee salvation. It says, I ask you moderation when I am wealthy or I am poor. Meaning, I'm taking a path of moderation. I am moderate, whether I am wealthy or poor. I do not spend when I am wealthy. I do not overspend. I do not waste the money. I do not transgress in spending. Also, in times when I am poor, I, I do not become very stingy and miserly fearing that this wealth and this provision will finish, right? So you become very uh, stingy and very uh, miserly. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the believers, Those when they spend, they do not overspend and they do not also become 
stingy in spending وكان بين ذلك قواما and they were those believers they are taking a justly balanced path وأسألك نعيما لا ينفد I ask you enjoyment a bliss that never finishes so here enjoyment and bliss that never ends what is it that the bliss or, or the bliss the bliss or the enjoyment that never finishes is nothing but the enjoyment and the bliss of the next life naim al akhirah ma indakum yanfad wa ma inda allah baq whatever you have is going to finish and end and whatever is with allah is going to stay continuously stay so in paradise whatever is in paradise it doesn't finish it is continuous as for whatever enjoyment you get in this life it will finish exactly like all of this worldly life is going to finish so uh, to a point that he quotes al hafiz ibn rajab alayhi rahmatullah as saying it's as if ka'annahu hina yanzilu bihi al maut wa sakaratih lam yadhuq na'iman min na'im al dunya it's as if the human being when death comes to him and the intoxications of death come to him it's as if he never enjoyed anything of the enjoyments of the worldly life the next dua is says wa as'aluka qurrata ayn la tanqati' and i ask you qurrata ayn qurrata ayn is coolness for the eye meaning comfort for the eye meaning being comfortable being satisfied being pleased satisfaction that is i ask you satisfaction that never ceases never stops here qurratul ayn this satisfaction is from the enjoyment naim from the bliss which i am asking but i am asking for this satisfaction in this worldly life and in the next life because the enjoyment as was mentioned there is part of it that will cease and stop and finish and part of the enjoyment is that which does not finish does not cease so the one who is satisfied just with the worldly pleasures then this satisfaction this satisfaction of his is definitely going to cease and stop at some point in time this happiness that he has in this world worldly life is vanishing zail is going to go that is because even the enjoyments of this worldly life mashubatun bil faja'i wal munaghisat the enjoyments of this worldly life they are mixed with calamities and they are mixed with troubles that will make you you know sorrowful right so the believer in this worldly life al mu'min fi hadhihi ad dunya la taqarru aynuhu illa billahi azza wa jal wa dhikrihi wa mahabbatihi wal uns bih the believer he will not find complete satisfaction in this worldly life except by through allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through mentioning him remembering him loving him being happy and comfortable uh, with him subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, preserving and keeping his duties towards him or being obedient to him during the night and day and from the greatest of these satisfactions is as salah the prayer as rasulullah sallallahu said ju'ilat qurratu ayni fi salah he said about himself my satisfaction was made in salah so when he prays that's when he is satisfied alayhi as salatu was salam now the satisfaction in the next life so he's ask, asking satisfaction that doesn't finish in this life and in the next life satisfaction that doesn't finish in this life is the satisfaction with being satisfied with allah believing in him remembering him obeying him praying and so on and so forth satisfaction that doesn't finish in the next life this includes this includes the enjoyment that is in al barzakh this is now after death al barzakh is the time after death and up until resurrection also 
enjoyment that is after that, that is in the next life, after resurrection. So this satisfaction uh, that uh, does not end, does not finish, uh, uh, this is the uh, one that doesn't finish at all, and that is the next in the next life, including the time that you spend in the grave and the time that is after uh, the resurrection. The one who is satisfied with Allah Azza wa Jal, then he has achieved satisfaction that never finishes in this worldly life until he dies. And he will receive the satisfaction that does not end while he's in the grave. It does not end after the resurrection. Then he asked, أَسْأَلُكَ الرِّضَى بَعْدَ الْقَضَى I ask you to be pleased, to be satisfied after the decree. The decree here is referring to the divine decree, the divine destiny, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destines for you. You are asking Allah here to be pleased and satisfied with whatever Allah decrees and destines for you. So he is asking after the qada happens, comes to pass, whatever Allah destines for you happens, you are asking him to be pleased after that. That is because at that time, the reality of pleasure will show and emerge. As for al-rida qabla al-qada, being pleased before the divine decree happens, then this is now an intention. This is a claim that might happen from the servant when the decree happens to him. Uh, he is hoping to be satisfied before the decree comes, but then when it happens to you, when the calamity befalls you, now maybe this willpower of yours will dissolve completely, will vanish, right? So here you're asking Allah to be satisfied after the divine decree happens. So this includes whether the divine decree was good in your case or was not good in your case. So you are being satisfied then you are content with whatever Allah decreed you are uh, not if, if it was uh, it, if it was good for you whatever Allah has decreed for you if it was good then you are satisfied and content with it you do not go overboard in asking for more now and you are also thankful to whatever Allah has given you as in the case of something bad happens to you then you become patient after the divine decree happens, then you are asking to be patient and you do not also go overboard in asking for uh, asking uh, other things. Uh, you are also um, thanking Allah for whatever uh, has given you. Hmm? So you are uh, patient يعني in times of good you are so satisfied and content with whatever Allah granted you you do not ask for more you do not go overboard in that in case of something bad happens to you then you become patient you do not become angry with whatever Allah decreed for you rather you meet this divine decree with a cheerful face with a soul that is completely satisfied and you are thanking Allah continuously for uh, whatever he has uh, decreed uh, subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. So uh, this satisfaction, being satisfied with divine destiny, with divine decree, this is a, a high status, great status in the religion. The one who achieved this then uh, then he uh, is someone uh, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, pleased with. He is someone whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with for as the scholars say al jaza'u min jins al-amal the reward is of the same type of a deed that you do. So if you are satisfied Allah will reward you with satisfaction. If you are pleased with Allah, 
then Allah will treat you with pleasure. As in the Quran, رضي الله عنهم وردوا عنه. رضي الله عنهم وردوا عنه. Allah is pleased with them and they with him. عبد الواحد ابن زيد is reported to have said الرضا باب الله الأعظم satisfaction being pleased with Allah this is the great door to Allah وجنة الدنيا it is the paradise of this worldly life being pleased with, with whatever Allah decrees for you is the paradise of this world ومستراح العابدين and it is the resting place for it is the resort for the worshippers. It is the resort for the worshippers. The next dua is وَأَسْأَلُكَ بَرْدَ الْعَيْشِ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ I ask you easy living, cool living after death. So you're asking for comfort and peace after death. And that is by your soul being raised up to the paradise in the highest of high في أعلى علين. and uh, this will indicate that you are living in the best type of a life after death uh, this will be after death for uh, the believer uh, so أسألك برد العيش بعد الموت so you're asking to have easy comfortable peaceful living after death Right? Because before death, before death, this living that you live before death, it has, some, it has to have some sort of trouble, some sort of sorrow, some sort of grief. Right? But then what you worry more about is after death. That's what you want to have really cool, peaceful, and comfortable type of living. Because living here, you are going to be fi kabad, as in the Quran. You are going through some sort of difficulties and hardship. But then you are asking easy, comfortable living after you die. Again, by the soul being raised up to the, high, uh, the highest of paradise, as there, this has come in uh, some uh, authentic hadith, that the souls of the believers will be like that. They are in the bellies of uh, birds that are roaming in paradise. And the same has come for the martyrs uh, also, that their souls are like that. وَأَسْأَلُكَ لَذَّةَ النَّظَرِ إِلَى وَجْهِكَ وَالشَّوْقَ إِلَى لِقَائِكَ I ask you the enjoyment of looking at your face. And the longing, the yearning to meet with you. This here, this dua has gathered together the best that is in this worldly life. And that is to long, to yearn, to love, to be eager, to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the greatest enjoyment in this worldly life. Also, it has uh, included the best the most enjoying matter in the next life. And that is looking at the face of Allah, the noble face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which there is nothing that is more beautiful, nothing more enjoying uh, than seeing him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Suhaib ibn Sinan radiyallahu anhu wa ardahu fil jannah, he said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إذا دخل أهل الجنة الجنة يقول الله تبارك وتعالى تريدون شيئا أزيدكم When the people of paradise enter paradise Allah تبارك وتعالى says to them Do you want something that I will add? I will increase you? فيقولون ألم تبيض وجوهنا They say did you not whiten our faces? ألم تدخلنا الجنة وتنجنا من النار didn't you enter us into paradise and save us from the fire? قَالَ فَيَكْشِفُ الْحِجَابِ He said, so he removes the veil. That is the veil from his face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his veil is light. 
So he removes the veil from his face, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَمَا أُعْطُوا شَيْئًا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّظَرِ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ عَزَّ وَجَلْ So they are not given anything more beloved to them than looking at their Lord عز وجل. That is the greatest enjoyment in paradise. So the greatest joy that the believers will experience in paradise is looking at the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in there. So he is asking the best that you have in this life, the best enjoyment, and that is to always long, always eager, to always be wishful, always be anxious to meet Allah Azza wa Jal. Someone who is like that, always, he is someone who is living a very good life. Always Allah is on his mind. And the enjoyment of looking at his face in paradise, and that is the highest enjoyment in paradise. The next piece he says, he is asking that those best enjoyments in this life and in the next life, he is asking that في غير ضراء مضرة ولا فتنة مضلة. Not going through hardship that is harmful to me. I'm not going through temptation, chaos, confusion that is misguiding, that is misleading to me. So I am asking you eagerness to meet with you, not having anything that is harming me in my religion nor in my life, that I am living a life that is free and devoid from harm, from calamity, which I may not have patience for it. Also, it is a life that is free and devoid from misguiding turmoils, misguiding confusions, misguiding temptations that will cause one to fall into so much uh, confusion, being perplexed, leading one to be completely destroyed. Then he says, the next piece, Allahumma zayinna bizinat al-iman O oh Allah, beautify us. O oh Allah, adorn us with the beautification, with the adornment of Iman, of faith. O oh Allah, make our inner parts and our outer parts beautified, adorned with the adornment of faith. So, the inner beautification is referring to having correct sound belief having yaqeen, having certainty of faith that is fixed, that is firm, unwavering, not shaky. Also, beauty for the tongue, adornment for the tongue by remembrance of Allah Azza wa and by reciting the Quran. Beautification and adornment for our body parts by righteous deeds, by continuous obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the adornment that is complete and beneficial and continuous is the beauty, is the adornment of iman and taqwa faith and piety when this iman and taqwa is all inclusive, is including the heart and includes also the body parts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called at taqwa to be clothing, garment, libas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that it is the best, the best type of clothing that you will have. وَلِبَاسُ التَّقْوَى ذَلِكَ خير. And the clothing of piety, that is best. The clothing of piety, that is best. Last piece, وَجْعَلْنَا هُدَاتًا مُهْتَدِينَ Hudatan muhtadin. Make us hudat, the plural of hadi, guide, guiding someone who's guiding others. Muhtadi is the one who is, uh, is seeking guidance. He is guided. So make us guided within ourselves and a source of guidance for others. So we guide ourselves and we guide the others. And this is the best of levels 
of the believers as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا and we made them imams we made them leaders so they are leaders they are guiding they are guided within themselves they are leaders يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا they guide through our command they guide others through our command so they are guided within themselves and they are guiding to others as in the dua that the Prophet وسلم, made for Muawiyah Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu uh, anhu wa an Abi wa ardahuma fil jannah Rasulullah وسلم, made dua for Muawiyah and the dua of the Prophet وسلم, is answerable the dua of the Prophet وسلم, for someone is answerable so he made dua for Muawiyah there are some deviant groups that they think all of bad things about Muawiyah radiallahu anhu. Muawiyah radiallahu anhu is one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he, alayhi uh, al-ridwan radiallahu anhu, the scholars say he's like a, a screen or a veil for the other companions. Yani if you strike that veil, if you hit it, then you're going to go through and then you're going to fall into destruction you're going to go through you start attacking the other companions right so anyone who slanders or says anything bad about any of the companions of the messenger وسلم, then as the scholars of the past have said you should know that he is a zindiq he is not someone who, who, to be trusted for al-islam he is someone who's a, who is a hypocrite anyone who attacks slanders, defames, insults, any of the companions of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa the sahaba, then he has gone astray. And he is the one who is to be uh, criticized, he is the one to be defamed, slandered, insulted, and he is the one who has done that to his own self. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he made dua for Muawiyah, he said to him, about him, Allahumma اجعله هاديا مهديا وهده وهدي به Oh Allah make him guide for others هاديا Oh Allah make him مهديا someone who is guided وهده guide him and وهدي به and guide through him So he used both the nouns and the verbs هاديا مهديا guide for others, guided within himself. Ihdihi, guide him, O oh Allah, and guide through him. So with the verbs and with the nouns, he made dua of all for him, alayhi salatu wassalam, and radiallahu an Muawiyah. Now, this uh, uh, description uh, to the hudat, to the guides, describing them uh, uh, here, that they are muhtadeen. So that they are guides for others and they are guided within themselves. That is how. Yani, he is a guide and you're asking for him to be guided. Yani, he's, guide, he's, a, he's guiding others already. So how is it that he is guided within himself? Well, that for the servant to be knowledgeable of the truth and following it. Knowledgeable of the truth following it, teaching it to others and also guiding uh, the others, right? But then he himself is abiding, but by what he is uh, calling the others to, right? So if you call to guidance, you call to the wheed, to the oneness of Allah, you know, you call to it people who are falling into shirk association, or you are calling to uh, sunnah uh, the people who are falling into bid'ah or innovation that goes against the way of the Prophet ﷺ, you are calling them to follow the sunnah and to leave the bid'ah this is now all uh, inclusive uh, in there but then there could be the case where you know the truth but then you don't follow it and the one who has done that then 
he has a resemblance resemblance to the who the one who knows the truth but he doesn't follow it he has resemblance to the hypocrites more than that who amongst the kuffar yes al maghdubi alayhim those who um, Allah is angry with they know the truth but they don't follow it right and the one who is worshipping Allah but then without knowledge right then he has resemblance to the Christians who are misguided they just worship a lot of worship but then not upon sound knowledge not upon sound knowledge so here the description وَجْعَلْنَا هُدَاتًا مُهْتَدِينَ Make us not only guides for others, but make us also guided within ourselves. So we are pra practicing what we are preaching. We are calling the people to what is right and make us from those who follow that uh, right path, that uh, straight path. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ That's what we are asking in Surah Al-Fatiha. Guide us to the straight path. صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those whom you have bestowed favor upon them. Those whom you have granted bounty and favor. The prophets, the most truthful ones, نبيين والصديقين والشهداء, the martyrs, والصالحين, the righteous people. These are the ones whom Allah has favored subhanahu wa ta'ala غير المغضوب عليهم not the ones who earned anger the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after that the anger of the prophets and the anger of the different people these are the ones who knew the truth but they did not follow it and غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين and not those who have gone astray so those who are working, doing deeds, but not based on sound knowledge. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit all of us from what we heard, to make us from a people who listen to a statement and follow the best of it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower uh, his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa with his salat and salam and mercy and barakat for this dua that he has taught us that is inclusive of the, all the goodness in this worldly life and in the next life. And may Allah be pleased with the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ammar ibn Yasir, who radiallahu anhu, who narrated, who learned this from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then conveyed this beautiful dua from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam to us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, bless and have mercy and be pleased with those scholars of the past who narrated those narrations to us up until they were uh, recorded in the books of knowledge and then they reached us here uh, now uh, in this year after so many years have gone after the death of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam we were not present there and we are receiving this information from him alayhi salatu wassalam and that is the barakah the blessing of al-islam and those who followed al-islam uh, in the uh, right way we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be uh, amongst those and jazakumullahu uh, khayran subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk inshallah we will continue uh, next week uh, inshallah ta'ala with uh, explanation of the fortress of the Muslim uh, inshallah uh, as I mentioned today is a special session where we took the whole session with just one hadith but next time inshallah it will be shorter so we can include more ahadith uh, from the fortress inshallah ta'ala I remind you again that the fortress of the believer or the Muslim authored by the Sheikh Saeed Al-Qahtani is a number of words of dhikr and dua uh, that the Sheikh has collected from the Quran and from the Sunnah 
uh, and um, it is available in Arabic, it is available in English. You can download it on your phones and uh, on your PC. Uh, also, um, we have copies of this for those who don't have it, and this is uh, distributed free of charge. So if you don't have it, then we'll give you a copy, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Um, we will stop here, uh, inshallah ta'ala.